Hello and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. Coming so soon after my last video where I used toggle switches in conjunction with the X-Plane Direct plugin, I've now moved on to the subject of rotary encoders with a view to finding out if they could be used with this plugin as well. The short answer to this question is yes they can, although to achieve this functionality I've had to write a brand new and bespoke Arduino sketch code so that the rotary encoders could communicate with the microcontroller in the first instance and then with X-Plane Direct. So for the purposes of this particular project I'll be using the Mega 2560 microcontroller as I did before plus six standard rotary encoders to operate a number of virtual autopilot controls in the Zeebo 737800 aircraft. To begin with then, we'll just have a quick look at my latest test board, which I've reconfigured for this new project. And as is customary, I've taken photos from all sides so that you can get a clearer view of the layout. To make things even clearer though, I think that this photo might be helpful. Uh, we have the Mega 2560 microcontroller, of course, the six rotary encoders that I just mentioned, and my homemade ground distribution board. From a wiring point of view, the signal wires from all of the rotary encoders terminate at the even numbered pin terminals 22 through 44, which again I've done for convenience sake in making this video. There are two signal wires from each rotary encoder and care should be taken to connect these the correct way round. In my case, for rotary encoder R1, the green wire goes to pin 22 and the yellow wire goes to pin 24 and this is simply repeated for rotary encoders R2 through R6 on the adjacent pin terminals of course. Now you don't have to use the same pin numbers that I have you could use any you like just as long as the pin terminals used can be declared as inputs. Each rotary encoder also has a ground return wire and these must all be individually connected back to the ground pin terminal of the microcontroller and this is where my ground distribution board comes in as it acts as a main collection point for every ground return wire with only one single ground wire going from there back to the microcontroller itself. And that brings us on to the theoretical wiring for this particular project which I guess you'll find reasonably straightforward. So the only point left to make here is that for layouts like this you would normally have to include physical pull down or pull up resistors to prevent erroneous open circuit electrical signals being read. However, as I'm taking advantage of the pull up resistor that is actually built into the microcontroller itself, such physical resistors are not required in this case. OK, so having looked at all of the hardware side of things, uh, we can now start to look at the Arduino sketch code that I wrote for this project. And I've, I'm going to do something now that I did in the previous video, and that's to show you a short version um, of the code and then the full, full version of it. Um, the short version first, uh, just to make it less intimidating and to make it slightly easier for you to make out what's going on. Um, there are... Uh, what, there is one part of this code that is purely dedicated to making the X-Plane Direct plugin function properly and that is these lines here uh, that first one is the library that you need which you can download from Curiosity Workshop uh, this is a standard bit of code that needs to be written um, if we come down here all of this is uh, simply required to make the plugin function and this part down here is also required. The rest of it um, is to do with the, the function of the rotary encoders, or in this case, one rotary encoder. So to start off, we need um, the rotary.h library, uh, which can be downloaded at uh, the GitHub repository as shown there. Then we're going to set up our rotary encoders um, and declare which pin numbers they're connected to. So we're only using uh, one rotary encoder, as I said, uh, in this particular short sketch. Um, and they're going to be connected to pin numbers 22 and 24 on the Mega 2560. 
then we create a couple of uh, variables here altitude select up and altitude select down and they represent the command values uh, that will be action later in the sketch come down to the void setup section we have this simple line here r1 begin true that's to uh, basically initiate um, this particular rotary encoder and the library we declare uh, pin numbers uh, 22 and 24 here as inputs and we are also taking advantage of the onboard pull-up resistor uh, on the microcontroller this part here is all to do with the plug-in as long as you've written this correctly it will function as it should then we come down to uh, registering um, the commands that we want to use in X-Plane itself uh, which will allow us to activate those commands uh, when we're at, when we're at flying the aircraft. So this is, these are the variables that we created: altitude select up and altitude select down, and that equals the commands in X-Plane uh, as written here: laminar B738 autopilot altitude up or altitude down. Then we come to the void loop section. Um, so X, uh, X plane direct plugin will start to run then we come down to this and this this part is really related to the rotary.h library unsigned char result 1 equals r1 process that's uh, so a fancy way of saying that uh, we want to read the output of rotary encoder 1 uh, to see what signals we're getting out of it and if the microcontroller determines from that that the uh, rotary encoder has been turned clockwise then we initiate this command trigger here which is altitude select up if on the other hand the rotary encoder has been deemed to have turned counterclockwise then we want to uh, send a command trigger to explain to uh, as, as stated here altitude select down so turning it clockwise will increase the altitude turning it anti-clockwise will uh, de decrease the altitude and that's all there is to it for this one uh, rotary encoder now if I go to my full code you can now see that I've added um, additional lines of code here so instead of one rotary encoder we now have six R1 through R6 and each of those are connected to the pin numbers shown here and they're all the even uh, numbered pin terminals on the Mega 2560 then we have a few more variables here which are associated with the commands in X-Plane that we want to action later on we've already looked at the altitude select up and down this is the pilot VOR uh, radial select knob up and down, airspeed up and down, heading select knob up and down, uh, co-pilot VOR radial up and down, and cabin pressure uh, up and down. Then we come down to the void setup section here, and we are basically initiating um, all of the uh, six rotary encoders we're setting the uh, pin terminals that each of these rotary encoders are connected to uh, to inputs and we're using the uh, pull-up resistor on the microcontroller then uh, we are going to use our variables that we declared earlier and we're going to say something like altitude select up equals the relevant command in x-plane and we're doing that for uh, all of these so we've got altitude select up and down uh, pilot VOR radial and so on and so forth coming down to the void loop we've now got one two three four five and six uh, different sections and each of those represent the uh, rotary encoder that we have in our circuit so uh, the first one um, as I said before we've got uh, this bit here which reads the output of the rotary encoder and if it detects that it's going clockwise then it will do this if it set, set, senses the rotary encoder has been turned counterclockwise it will do this and it's exactly the same 
for all of the other variables. The only difference between this one and this one is the uh, rotary encoder number here. So that's that's one. This is number two, and so on, and also the uh, variable that we are using for this particular rotary encoder. And we do exactly the same for all of the others. Okay, so obviously if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try to do my best to answer. Um, but now what I'm going to do is to go over to explain and uh, we'll see these rotary encoders actually functioning, hopefully, as they are programmed to. Okay, so I've loaded the Zebo 737-800 now into X-Plane 12. And uh, you should be seeing uh, six rotary encoders on my test rig in a video overlay. Um, what I'm going to do with each of those is to uh, alter the settings here. Uh, firstly, this uh, selector here, which I think is the uh, pilot's VOR radial selector. Um, if I look in the operations manual, that's what it seems to be termed as. Then I'm going to uh, change the airspeed, head in select knob here, altitude, um, then the co-pilot's VOR radial, and if I um, change the view here, I'm also going to alter the um, altitude cabin pressure setting here. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. So we'll do this one first, and if I can video this without all being fingers and thumbs so this should work so that's uh, heading course increasing and then decreasing so that's good then we have the uh, speed uh, autopilot speed I think all of these are well most of these are to do with the autopilot so we've got the autopilot speed starts at a minimum of 100 and then increases and back again uh, we usually set this at around what 140, uh, 140 knots, something like that. Then we go to the heading select here, and that's working. Yep, good. And the altitude uh, set initial altitude of say oh, 6,000 feet yeah so that all works up and down good then we have the co-pilots um, if I'm getting this right the VOR radial select knob here so that uh, goes up and down as it should there's no delay every slight click of the rotary encoder does in fact represent one uh, increment change on each of these dials that's good and if I go to uh, the overhead panel, the last um, rotary encoder is going to change uh, the uh, cabin pressure altitude here. Yeah, so that all works. That's good, I'm pleased with that. Um, I think that is a very satisfactory result. And um, clearly, uh, wherever you've got um, any of these selector knobs, if you can find the um, the command in Xplain for it, then you should be able to set up your sketch code to adjust um, each of them as required. Okay, so there we are then, uh, the end of yet another project that you may wish to have a go at yourselves at some point. Hopefully you found the video of interest and maybe even somewhat inspiring, and if you did then Please don't forget to smash the like button and even consider uh, subscribing so as not to miss anything in future. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try to assist you where I can. Finally, I would thank you once again for your continued support of my channel and wish you all the good things that life has to offer. Tata for now.